Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Rafael, I am an electrical engineer and bilingual teacher of mathematics and physics in Brazil. And in this video, I would like to show to you the solution of eight exercises on ratios and proportions as a preparation for exams. Let's go to the first exercise. Exercise number one says, two students, A and B, received undergraduate research scholarships of the same value. At the end of the month, student A had spent four-fifths of the total amount of his scholarship, while student B had spent five-sixths of the total amount of his scholarship, with student A having eight dollars more remaining than student B. And now the questions. What was the value of the scholarship? And letter B, how much did each student save that month? All right, my friends, this is the exercise. Let's go to the solution. But before going to the solution, let's review the information that the exercise provided. The exercise said that student A spent four fifths of the total amount of his scholarship while student B spent five sixths of the total amount of his scholarship with student A having eight dollars more remaining than student B at the end of the month. And the exercise wants us to calculate the value of the scholarship and how much each student saved that month. All right, my friends, this is the exercise. Let's go to the solution. Let X be the value of the scholarship each student received, okay? We are going to call the value of the scholarship each student received X. And firstly, we are gonna calculate the scholarship value, the value of the scholarship, all right? Uh, for student A, the amount remaining for student A was X is the total amount of the scholarship and the exercises say that student A spent four fifths, all right? So if student, if student A received X, which is the total value of the scholarship and student A spent four fifths, Four fifths of what? Four fifths, of course, of x. Four fifths of the value of the scholarship. Then, at the end of the month, student A will have x minus four fifths of x is equal to one fifth of x for student A. All right. And now the same for student B. For student B, in the beginning of the month, student B had x but he spent five sixths of x okay then at the end of the month one minus five sixth is equal to one six of x okay this is what student a had at the end of the month and this is what student B had at the end of the month. Now, let's start, uh, let's set up an equation based on the given information and find the value of X. We are going to use this information here to find the value of X. The exercises say that at the end of the month, student A had $8 more remaining than student B, okay, so this is the amount that student A had at the end of the month, one fifth of X, and at the end of the month, student B had one sixth of X, and the exercises say that this minus this has to be eight dollars because student A had at the end of the month eight dollars more remaining than student B. So this has to be equal to eight dollars. 
All right, we are going to find the lowest common denominator here. Okay, the lowest common denominator between 5 and 6 is 30. 30 divided by 5 is 6. And 30 divided by 6 is 5. And this has to be equal to 8. Okay? And uh, we are going to continue calculating here. And we find that 6 minus 5 is 1. 1 30 of x is equal to 8. 1 over 30 times x is equal to 8. If we calculate, we find that x is equal to 200 and forty dollars all right so the value of the scholarship was two hundred and forty dollars and now we are going to solve letter b how much did each student save that month all right student a saved this and student b saved this this is the amount that they had at the end of the month Okay, for student A, uh, it is going to be one-fifth of X, and X is 240. Then, for student A, this value is $48. And uh, for student B, it is going to be one-sixth of X. And X, we found it to be 240. And we find that it is equal to $40. Okay? So student A saved $48. And student B saved $40. Alright, my friends? This is exercise 1. Let's go to the next. Exercise number two. In a public exam, it was observed that the ratio of men to women was three fifths. If the total number of candidates was 1,600, determine letter A, the number of women who took the exam, and letter B, the ratio of the number of candidates who passed the exam to the total number of candidates given that five over 12 of the men passed the exam and 17 over 25 of the women did not pass the exam. Okay, my friends, this is the exercise. Let's go to the solution. The exercise said that the ratio of men to women was 3 fifths and that the total number of candidates was 1,600, all right? So, uh, in letter A, we are going to calculate the number of women who took the exam. Let's go, let's calculate what letter A wants us to calculate. Find the number of women who took the exam, okay? Let M, let M represent the number of uh, men who took the exam and W represented the number of women who took the exam. Uh, given that the ratio of men to women is three-fifths, we can express this relationship as follows. Men over women is equal to three-fifths, okay? So this is the ratio that the exercise provided. This implies that men is equal to three fifths times women. All right. We also know that the exercise gave us this information here. We also know that the total number of candidates is one thousand and six hundred. Thus, men plus women is equal to one thousand and six hundred. Okay. All right, we are going to work with these two equations to find the number of men 
and the number of women, but the exercise wants us only to calculate the number of women, then we're gonna calculate the number of women, okay? So I'm gonna put it, this thing here, here, okay? Substituting there, three fifths of women plus women is equal to 1600, all right? And we are going to combine it. Five times one is five plus three is eight. So it is equal to eight fifths of W equal to 1600. We pass this eight dividing here. It becomes 1600 divided by eight. And then we multiply by 5 and we find that W is equal to 8,000 so 1,000 women took the exam and as we have 1,600 then we have 600 men 600 men took the exam okay and now uh, this is the solution for letter A this is the answer for letter A. Uh, the number of women who took the exam is 1,000. Now let's go to letter B. Okay, letter B wants us to calculate. Let me go there. Let me go back there and read it again. The ratio of the number of candidates who passed the exam to the total number of candidates given that 5 over 12 of the men passed the exam and 17 over 25 of the women did not pass the exam. So this is the information that the exercise provided. We are going to use it to calculate this ratio here between the ones that passed, the, the candidates who passed to the number, total number of candidates. Okay? Find the ratio of the number of candidates who passed the exam to the total number of candidates. Okay, we already know that the total number of women who took the exam is 1,000 and the total number of men who took the exam is 600, okay? Uh, now we are going to calculate the number of men who passed the exam. The exercise gave this information here that 5 over 12 of the men passed exam. So the number of men who passed exam is this is the ratio, the ratio of men that passed the exam. And we know that the total number of men that took the exam is 600. Then uh, I divided this by this. It is 50 times 5, it is 250. These are the men that passed, men that passed, all right, and calculating the number of women who passed, the exercises say that 17, 17 over 25 of the women did not pass, okay, did not pass. So, the number of women uh, that passed, the number, this is the number of women that did not pass. The number of women that did pass is equal to 1 minus this. 1 minus this is the number of women that actually passed the exam. And this is equal to 25 times 1 is 25 minus 17 is 8. So 8 over 25 is the ratio of women that pass the exam. And if we multiply it by 8,000, we get the number of women that pass the exam. And this is equal to 320 women that passed. All right. So, uh, in this way, the total number of candidates who passed the exam is, the total number of candidates who passed the exam is 
250 plus 320, so 570 passed. Okay? This plus this is equal to this, and this is the number of people that passed the exam. Now, we're going to find the ratio. We're going to find the ratio. The ratio between the ones that passed to the total number of candidates is equal to 570 divided by 1600, and this is equal to 57 divided by 160 and this is the ratio between the people that passed the exam to the total number of candidates all right my friends and this is exercise number two let's go to the next now exercise number three now my friends in the early 2000s one in every five children born worldwide was chinese and among the Chinese children, three out of five were girls. For children of the other nationalities, the number of boys and girls born was balanced. Now the questions, letter A, if 250 children were born worldwide, how many Chinese girls would be expected? And letter B, what was the ratio between the number of newborn Chinese boys and the number of newborn girls of the other nationalities. All right, my friends, this is the question. Let's go to the solution. And letter A, we are going to calculate the, the number of Chinese girls. If 250 children were born, all right? Since one in every five children is Chinese, the exercise told us that one in five children born is Chinese, okay? So, we are going to use this information to calculate the fraction of the Chinese children, okay? The fraction of the Chinese children is one-fifth. Why? Because one in every five children born was Chinese in the early 2000s, all right? Then the ratio between the number of Chinese children born to the number of children born worldwide is one over five, okay? And the total number of people being born, 250, and uh, taking this, one-fifth of 250 is... 50. All right, so if 250 children are born, we expect 50 children to be Chinese. All right, and among the Chinese children, three out of every five are girls. So the fraction of Chinese girls is three girls out of five. When five children are born, we expect three to be girls in China in the early 2000s, all right? So the number of Chinese girls being born would be three-fifths of 50, and this is equal to 30, 30 Chinese girls, all right? And this is the solution of letter A. Letter A wanted us to calculate, let me go back, if 250 children were born, how many Chinese girls would be expected? 30 girls out of 250. Why? Because one in five children born worldwide is Chinese. So one fifth of the total is Chinese. One fifth of 250 is 50, all right, but the exercise also said that three out of five were girls, so we multiply this number here by three fifths and we find 30, 30 Chinese girls being born out of 250 children born worldwide, all right, this is the solution of letter A, let's go to letter B now. Letter B here, this is letter A, letter B here. 
Since three out of five Chinese children are girls, two out of five are boys. Okay? So, these are girls, Chinese girls. Two out of five are boys. Okay? And this is 20 Chinese boys. Alright? This is the number of boys that we expect when 250 children are being born worldwide. And the number of non-Chinese children, the number of non-Chinese children is 250 minus the number of Chinese children, 50, and this is equal to 200, 200 non-Chinese children. 200 non-Chinese children are being born worldwide. Since the number of boys and girls among non-Chinese children is balanced, half of them are girls. Half, half of 200, which is equal to 100, girls worldwide. Worldwide. All right? Consequently, the ratio between Chinese boys and girls of other nationalities is the number of Chinese boys divided by the number of uh, girls of other, well, other nationalities worldwide. We already calculated the number of Chinese boys we calculated here and it is 20 and the number of girls of the other nationalities is 100 and then we find that the ratio is one-fifth okay does the ratio between the number of newborn Chinese boys and the number of newborn girls of the other nationalities is one-fifth okay my friends this is exercise number three Let's go to question number four now. Exercise number four now, my friends. A car's fuel gauge needle shows that the tank is a fourth full. After adding seven gallons of gasoline to the tank, the owner observed that the needle indicates that the tank is five eighths full. Now the question. What is the total capacity of the tank? Alright my friends, this is the exercise, let's go to the solution. Let X represent the total capacity of the tank, okay? X, X is the capacity, X is the capacity of the tank. The initial amount, okay, the initial amount of gasoline in the tank is a fourth of X, okay? In the beginning, the exercise gave us this information. A car's fuel gauge needle shows that the tank is a fourth full. And if X is the total capacity of the tank, then the initial amount of gasoline in the tank is a fourth of X, all right? After adding seven gallons, the owner observed that the needle indicates that the tank is five eighths full. Okay, then the new amount is gonna be uh, the owner put seven gallons in the tank. Okay, so the new amount. is equal to the initial amount, the amount that already was in the tank, plus the seven gallons that the owner put in the tank, okay? All right, the owner added seven gallons to the amount that already was in the tank, okay? And this, and this has to be equal to this. Because the needle, the needle indicated that after putting seven gallons of gasoline in the tank, 
the needle indicates that the tank is 5 eighths full. But the capacity is X, then it is 5 eighths of X. Alright? And uh, we are going to solve it for X. We are going to solve it for X. 5 eighths of X minus a fourth of X is equal to 7. Okay? I passed this to this side, it became a negative. The lowest common denominator between 8 and 4 is 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1. 1 times 5 is 5. 8 divided by 4 is 2. One time, uh, 2 times 1 is negative 2x. And this is equal to 7. Alright? Then we find that it is equal to 3 eighths of x is equal to 7. I pass this 8 multiplying this 3 dividing, and this becomes x is equal to 7 times 8 divided by 3, and this is equal to this is equal to 18.67. Okay, my friends, all right, therefore, the total capacity of the tank is approximately 18.67 gallons, all right, isn't it? All right, my friends, this is exercise number four. Let's go to that next. Let's go to exercise number five. Exercise number five. Now, my friends, coffee is prepared and served into four cups, each with the same type of sugar. The first cup received 50 milliliters of coffee and two grams of sugar. The second cup received 7 milliliters of coffee and 3 grams of sugar. The third cup received 9 milliliters of coffee and 4 grams of sugar. And the fourth cup receives 120 milliliters of coffee and 5 grams of sugar. And the question is, in which cup is the coffee the sweetest? All right, my friends, this is the exercise and we are going to work with this information to find the solution that the exercise requested of us. The exercise asked, in which cup is the coffee the sweetest? All right, and to determine which cup contains the sweetest coffee, we need to calculate the sugar concentration for each cup by dividing the grams of sugar by the volume of coffee in milliliters, all right? For the first cup of coffee, the concentration is... The concentration is 2 grams divided by the amount of coffee, 50 milliliters, and this is equal to 0 0.04 grams per milliliter. For the second cup of coffee, the concentration is equal to 3 grams divided by 70 milliliters, and this is equal to 0 0.04286 grams per milliliter. And how about the third cup of coffee? For the third cup of coffee, the concentration is 4 grams of coffee divided by 9 milliliters. And this is equal to 0 0.0444 
grams per milliliter. And uh, finally, for the fourth cup of coffee, the concentration is 5 grams divided by 120 milliliters. And this is equal to 0 0.04167 grams per milliliter. All right? What we're going to do now is to compare these concentrations here to see which is the sweetest. And compare the concentrations, we find that the third, the third cup has the highest concentration of sugar. Okay? Compare the concentrations, we find that the third cup has the highest concentration of sugar per milliliter of coffee indicating that it is the sweetest all right my friends this is exercise number five let's go to the next let's go to exercise number six exercise number six now my friends a machine produces a complete part of a car in eight minutes if the machine operates continuously, how many complete parts can it produce in 9 hours? Alright my friends, this is the exercise, let's go to the solution. Firstly, we are going to understand the information that the exercise provided. The exercise said that the machine can produce one part in 8 minutes. With this information, the exercise wants us to calculate the number of parts this machine can produce if it operates continuously in nine hours. All right, the first step that we need to take is to convert hours to minutes. All right, we're gonna convert nine hours into minutes. And we know that one hour has 60 minutes, okay? So nine hours times 60 minutes. per hour is equal to 540 minutes okay so there are 540 minutes in 9 hours secondly we will determine the number of complete parts produced in 540 minutes all right the exercise said that the machine can produce one part in every eight minutes. All right, the machine takes eight minutes to make one part. So the total number of parts it can produce in 540 minutes is 540 divided by eight, and this is equal to 67.5. All right. Since the machine can only produce complete parts, it will make 67 complete parts in 9 hours. So in 9 hours, it makes 67 complete parts. Okay, my friends, this is the solution of the exercise. Let's go to the next now. Let's go to exercise number 7. Exercise number 7. In a company, five employees can prepare 15 boxes for shipping. Five employees can prepare 15 boxes for shipping in three hours. The shipping manager wants to speed up the preparation of four additional boxes of the same type, aiming to complete the task in just 20 minutes. Given that all employees work at the same rate, how many additional employees are needed to work alongside the initial five employees to achieve this goal? Okay, my friends, this is the question. Let's go to the solution. Firstly, we shall determine the rate of work of one employee. Okay? The calculation of the number of employee hours required to prepare 15 boxes okay five employees five 
five employees. times three hours is equal to 15 employee hour okay since 15 boxes require 15 employee hours the time required per box the time required per box is equal to 15 employee hours divided by 15 boxes. Then the time required for 15 employee hours to prepare 15 boxes is equal to one employee hour per box one employee hour per box this is the rate of work of one employee per box secondly we calculate the employee hours required to prepare four additional boxes. Four additional boxes times one employee hour per box is equal to Four employee hours okay and uh, we need to convert 20 minutes to hour 20 minutes one hour is 60 minutes 20 minutes is a third of the hour all right so you bear in mind that this is a third of the hour all right so the the number of employee hours required to prepare the additional four boxes is four employee hours Thirdly, we determine the total number of employees needed to complete four boxes in 20 minutes, which is a third of the hour. Let X be the total number of employees required, since these employees need to accomplish four employee hours of work in a third of the hour, then X is the total number of employees required and they need to work in a third of the hour to accomplish four employees hours okay and passing this, we find that X is equal to 12 employees. Okay? Consequently, since five employees are already working, five employees are already working, and to make Four additional boxes in 20 minutes, we need 12 employees. But in the exercise, we wanted us to calculate the number of additional employees. Okay, so 12 minus 5 is equal to 7. 
Then the shipping manager will need to add seven employees to work with the initial five employees to complete the task at the desired time. All right, my friends, this is exercise number seven. Let's go to the last. Let's go to exercise number eight. All right, my friends, let's go to the last exercise. Let's go to exercise number eight. A water reservoir was completely full when it started losing water at a constant rate. After 30 days, the reservoir's water volume was reduced to two-thirds of its maximum capacity. Starting from when the reservoir was full, how many days will it take for the water volume to decrease to 10% of the reservoir's maximum capacity? All right, my friends, this is the last exercise. This is exercise eight. Let's go to the solution. Firstly, we shall determine the rate of water loss. Okay, after 30 days, the reservoir retains two thirds of its maximum capacity, meaning that one third of its water has been lost, okay? Then the fraction of the reservoir's capacity lost per day is, okay? So, after 30 days, the reservoir retains two thirds of its maximum capacity. One minus two thirds is equal to one third, okay? One third is the water lost in 30 days. Then if we divide the maximum capacity uh, if we multiply the maximum capacity by one third, we have the amount that was lost in 30 days. If we divide this all by 30, we get the amount lost per day, which is 1 over 90 of the capacity per day, okay? the reservoir loses 1 over 90 of the max capacity per day. Secondly, we determine the remaining volume when the water is at 10% of the maximum capacity. Observe that to reach 10% of the reservoir's capacity, 90% must be lost. Okay, so 100% minus 10% is equal to 90%. So we are losing 90% of the capacity. To finish the exercise, we calculated the time required to lose 90% of the water. Since the rate of loss is 1 over 90 of the capacity per day, the number of days needed to lose 90% of the water is 90% of the max capacity, okay, that we are losing, and we are going to divide this by the rate at which the, the reservoir loses water per day. We want to make it lose 90% of the capacity and we are going to divide it by the rate at which it loses water per day. Okay? 1 over 90 of the capacity. And this is equal to 90% is 90 over 100 divided by 1 over 90 and this is equal to 81 days and what is the conclusion that we get it will take 81 days for the water volume to decrease to 10 percent of its maximum capacity this is the conclusion all right my friends and this is the video that i wanted to make I hope you learned from it and enjoyed it. I am a teacher, guys. 
If you want to book a lesson with me, use my WhatsApp numbers. Goodbye!